Hey guys, welcome back to the Real Numbers course. Oh, did you pick up on something? Yeah, yeah, new shirt, good eye, excellent observation, way to go. We've been talking about fractions a lot lately, and we've made a lot of, lot of uh, headway into this topic. In fact, we're almost done. I mean, we know that fractions are numbers. We totally understand that. We understand what they do, right? They help us represent parts of things. So like if someone says, can you fill two thirds of a, of a cup with water? We got that. There's the cup, three equal pieces, pour in two thirds, special effects. We got it, okay? No big deal. Um, we also saw this really cool thing with fractions that they can have different looks, right? They can wear different outfits, like 10 fifteenths. We know, we know that 10 fifteenths, when all, all the extra costume is taken off, we know that that's just two thirds, right? And we know how we do that with arithmetic. We just simply factor out ones, unnecessary ones. In this case, we could factor out five fifths away and five fifths times two thirds or one times two thirds is just two thirds, nothing to it. We also, oh, and we can go the other way, can't we? Right, two thirds, maybe it doesn't want its 10 fifteenths outfit on, maybe it wants a different outfit. Well, we could put on the sixth outfit, two thirds is really four sixths. And we put on that output by factoring in, multiplying in a one. Um, two thirds is also the same as 20 thirtieths, right? Just got to find the right one to change that outfit. Lots of different looks for the number two thirds. We also have gotten very, very good at comparing fractions to one another, like telling which is bigger. Like for example, two ninths or three fourths. In this case, it's very easy to, to see which is bigger. We can even just picture the, the bars in our head, right? Just wait, oh wait, let me get down there, I'm sorry. Just picture the bars in our head. And we can see two ninths, that's a little bit. Three fourths, yeah, that's way out there. Three fourths is the bigger number, okay? So like, for example, here, you try one just to make sure. Can you just visualize this? Which is bigger, five sevenths or nine hundredths, nine percent? Think about it, just picture them in your brain. Heart, come on, heart, I can't feel your thoughts. There we go, good, yes. All right, so five sevenths is clearly the bigger number, all right? We also had some obvious cases where comparisons were, you don't even have to do any work, okay? You don't have to picture the bars. Like for example, if you have the same denominators, what's bigger, 7 elevenths or 6 elevenths? All right, well, that's obvious, right? 7 elevenths is bigger. What if they had the same numerators, like this one, 1 fourth versus 1 seventh? Well, since we have the same number of pieces, one of each kind, it really comes down to the size of the piece. And we know that fourths are bigger than sevenths, right? Because the more pieces that you break something up into, the smaller the pieces. So one fourth is bigger than one seventh. Here, you try. What's bigger, two ninths or two fifths, right? This is an obvious quote unquote comparison because they have the same numerators. All right, well, what's bigger, a ninth? or a fifth, good, fifths. So two ninths has to be smaller than two fifths. Two fifths is the bigger number. There was that other case where, that made it obvious, where if one number was less than a half and one of the numbers was bigger than a half, we called that obvious because we don't need to do any work. Like for example, three eighths or 51%. Well, three eighths is less than a half because half in eighths is four eighths. So three eighths is less than a half, and we know 51% is more than a half, 50% is equal to a half. So 51% is more than a half, so 51% is the bigger number. Well, how about a situation like this though? What's bigger, three fifths or five eighths? Okay, if you picture the bars in your head, hmm, boy, that's hard because both of those numbers are just a little bit bigger than a half when I picture those bars in my head. They're both bigger than a half, just a little bit. Mm, okay, they, they don't have, oh no, it's not easy. They don't have 
the same denominators, right? Bis and eights, no. They don't have the same numerators, three and five. And we just said a second ago that they're both bigger than a half. So it's not one's less than a half, one's bigger than a half. They're both bigger than a half. So it's not obvious either. So what's making this hard? Why is this so hard? Well, it sort of comes down to this old adage. Have you ever heard this saying? Most, mostly it's, uh, I always think of older people saying this, but my grandpappy always used to say that you can't compare apples to oranges. And what he really meant was when things aren't the same things, it's, you really can't compare them uh, in general. Like, for example, if you wanted to say, well, what's more, three yen, three Japanese yen, or five American dollars? Well, I don't know. I don't know how much a yen is worth or how much a dollar is worth compared to that. So it's, it's hard. It's hard to tell. But if someone said, hey, what's more, three yen or five yen? Okay, clearly, five yen is bigger. All right? No problem. Um, same thing with these fractions though, right? What's bigger, three sevenths or five sevenths? All right, well clearly five sevenths is the bigger number. All right, so having them the same thing, not comparing apples to oranges, but apples to apples and oranges to oranges, that, that turns out to be um, the way to go, getting, getting them as the same things. So what does that mean over here? It wasn't easy, couldn't just see the bars in my head. It wasn't obvious. It didn't fall into either of those two obvious categories. So what do you do? You get a CD because that's what makes them apples to apples or oranges to oranges. It makes them the same thing. And we know that when they have a common denominator, same denominator, it's going to be obvious. So let's get a CD for these two fractions. All right, there they are, three fifths and five eighths. So we want to convert them into two fractions with the same um, denominators. So what denominator should we use? Yell it out. Good, fifths and eighths. We just multiply those two denominators together and we get fortieths. Let's convert them into fortieths. Nice job. All right, well, now we gotta find the ones that we'll use to convert. Remember, we can't cheat. We wanna anti-simplify, but keep them the same number. Let's see, what do we need to multiply fifths by to get fortieths? Well, it needs to be an eight in that denominator. So what that means is we need to multiply by that form of one, right? Eight eighths. Multiply straight across. Five times eight is 40. That's why we're doing it. And three times eight is 24. Good. Let's move down to the second fraction. Five eighths, we want to turn it into fortieths. So eight times what will give me 45? So let's Five fifths is the one we need here. Good, good, very nice. Eight times five is 40, five times five is 25. Ah, that's why this was so hard. It wasn't easy, it wasn't obvious. Look how close those fractions are in their 40th outfit. They just differ by 1 40th. Whoa, they're so close together. But 25 40ths, is definitely bigger than 24 40th. So in other words, 5 8 is the bigger number. And we see that more clearly when they're the same things, when they have the same denominator. Okay? All right, let's try another one. So what's bigger, 4 ninths or 3 sevenths? Ask yourself this, is it easy? If we just picture the bars in our head, Hmm, no, this time they're both kind of right around a half, aren't they? Just a little less than a half when, when I imagine those bars. Oh, I can't even do it. So it's not easy. Is it one of those obvious cases? So do they have the same denominator? Uh, nope. Do they have the same numerators? Nope. And we just said a second ago that they're both less than a half. It's not one less than a half, one bigger than a half. So they're both less than a half. So no, it's not obvious. So you know what to do. Let's get a CD and that'll make it obvious. All right, it'll make it the most obvious, the obviousest of the obvious cases. So let's get a CD, you ready? So let's take four ninths and three sevenths and let's convert them into equivalent fractions with a CD. Nine times seven is 63, that's our goal. So let's find the right form of one. So nine times seven will give us 63. So the form of one is gonna be seven sevenths. 
So 9 times 7 is 63. Yep, 4 times 7 is 28. And then down here, I think we need to use 9 ninths as our 1, right? So 7 times 9 is 63. 3 times 9 is 27. Ah, look at that again. So super duper close to one another. Just 1 63rd separates those two fractions. Those are so tight. Well, but now that they have a CD, we can see very clearly who's bigger. It's the 28 60 thirds, or in other words, four ninths. And it's four ninths, guys. There it is. All right. Beautiful, guys. Excellent job today. So I'm going to let you guys go to work on some problems. I'll get out of your hair. See what I did there? Have a great day, and I'll see you in our next lesson. Take care, guys.